Alright, lesson 1.4, surface areas of right pyramids and right cones. Uh, we move into a different phase kind of in this course that I was uh, talking about. We're going to deal with more volume and surface area. We've had some experience in dealing with this. Uh, probably not specifically with pyramids, so um, this will be a little bit different. Uh, cones as well. Uh, so let's get started. First thing we're going to talk about is uh, right pyramids, and then uh, at the end of the lesson we'll move into the cones portion. Okay. Uh, Alright, a right pyramid... is a 3D object that has only triangular faces and a base that is a polygon. All right, The shape of the base determines the name of the uh, pyramid. So for instance, the one that we have um, below here would be a square pyramid just because the base is a square. You could have any type of uh, a pyramid that you want, triangular, uh, rectangular, the list goes on. The triangular faces <clears throat> meet at a point called the apex. All right, so that's labeled below. The height of the pyramid is the perpendicular, hopefully you recognize that word, perpendicular distance from the apex to the center of the base. So a lot of people sometimes think that this outside um, part here would be the uh, height, but that's not the case. The height goes from the middle if you will, of the um, the base to the apex, that being the height. Okay. When the base of a right pyramid is a regular polygon, the triangular faces are congruent. All right. So what we know is that all of these ones, for instance, right down here, all of the uh, examples have um, a shape where all the sides are equal. So we can say that the triangles are equal. Then the slant height of the right pyramid is the height of the triangular face. All right, so the slant height being, they've labeled all three of those for you, so you can take a look. Slant height's going to be very important, all these different things that we're defining in order to uh, calculate the surface area. Lastly, the surface area. of a right pyramid is the sum of the areas of the triangular faces and the base. So for instance, this one you'd have the one, two, three triangles, and then the fourth would be the triangle on the bottom. This one would be one, two, three, four triangles, the base on the bottom, and so on. All right. uh, the formula to calculate the surface area of the um, of a right rectangular, sorry, of a right pyramid with a regular polygon base is as follows. It's one half. This S represents the slant times the perimeter of the base, so the perimeter base going all the way around, plus whatever that base area is. All right, so that's what we're going to use in the uh, examples to follow. So let's turn the page. Example one: Calculate the surface area of this regular tetrahedron to the nearest square meter. Tetrahedron just meaning it's a uh, three-dimensional object. All right, so I like to always start out when I'm doing volume and surface area questions with the equation. So surface area, I use capital S A, is equal to one half S times the perimeter of the base plus the base area. Okay, this is a formula that's going to be on your uh, formula sheet, so you can have this for all tests and quizzes. Let's take a look if they give us the slant here. Looks like they do. They give us the slant is 4.3. The perimeter of the base. Well, they tell you that this one side down here is 5. Then that must be 5. Then that must be 5. So we have a perimeter of 15. All right. Now the base area. This is where um, you kind of have to remember some of the stuff that we've done in, in years before. Because we need to know what the base is. Well, the base is a triangle. All right, and so for the area of a triangle, we have one half base times height. All right, so that form is also, uh, I believe, going to be included on your formula sheet. But um, it's important for you to know, so you don't have to look uh, all the time. So we're going to have one half base and the height. So the base is going to be the five all right, that we have right there, and the height is going to be four point three. 
At this stage, you may be asking, how do I know that that's the, um, the base area? Well, the reason is since it says it's a regular tetrahedron, we can, uh, we can assume that all of the sides are the same. So really any of these could have been the base. We just knew that the height was 4.3 and the base, no matter where you're at, was going to be 5, like so. Okay. Um, and now what we would do is we would just use our calculator. I would plug all this in. So carefully here we'll have 0.5 times 4.3 times 15 plus... 0.5 times 5 times 4.3. Right, and that gives us a surface area of exactly 43 meters squared. All right. Uh, recall that for surface area, we use units squared. Of course, they don't always have to be meters, but they're always going to be units squared. All right, example two. A right rectangular uh, pyramid has uh, base dimensions four by six. So I've added this little uh, uh, pyramid here to give us a hand, so you may want to sketch it if you can. I had a hard time sketching uh, this one, so I kind of cheated. So you'll have to try your best. Um, and a height of eight meters. All right, so like so. So meters, meters, meters. I find drawing yourself a picture um, does help uh, with this one. Okay, so calculate the surface area of this pyramid to the nearest square meter. Well, this one's going to be a little bit of work, all right? So we're going to make sure we, uh, we write small here. Uh, I'm going to start out with a little note. Since we do not have the slant height, we must do that first using Pythagoras. Okay, so what I'm saying is if you recall the formula, the formula needs for you to have the slant height. Well, we have basically everything else except that. So uh, the triangle I'm going to focus on first is going to be this uh, this front blue one right here. So if you can imagine me taking this front blue guy and blowing it kind of up here, you'd have a triangle that looks, let's say, like so. All right. Now let's think about what the dimensions of that are. Well, in uh, if you look, this dimension going backwards right here, that's going to be worth half of the four or two. Okay. The height going through the middle, of course, is eight. So now we have enough information for us to um, calculate what this S is. So I'm going to write this as, uh, I'll just put S, so we'll do all the calculations in this blue too. So using Pythagoras, we're going to have 2 squared plus 8 squared is equal to S squared. 2 squared is 4, 8 squared is 64, S squared is equal to 68, or S is equal to the square root of 68. And I'm going to leave it just like that. The reason is I don't want to round until I get to the last step. Now, this one's kind of unique because you might think, oh, okay, we found the slant, we're good to go. Well, we have two different slants here, if you will. We have that front slant, and then we have this one. They are actually going to be different, as you're going to see. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this red triangle, and we're going to do this red one right down here. Okay, and maybe not really drawn to s scale well, but we'll see. Uh, so this dimension on the bottom there is going to be 3. The height is 8, so we'll do Pythagoras with this one. We have... 8 squared plus 3 squared is equal to s squared. I'll label that as s. That gives you 64 plus 9 is equal to 72, or s squared is equal to 73. s is equal to the square root of 73. Okay. So now what we are ready to do is we're ready to go and uh, calculate the surface area. Well, we have to be a little bit careful when we do this. For this shape, unlike the ones that we've dealt with before, all the triangles have been the same. And so the way to get around this is you can just take the perimeter of the base um, and then multiply it by the slant. Well, this one you can't. Because, for instance, if you take a look here, the, uh, the two blue, um, or like, let's say, uh, this front side, uh, I don't know if you can see well, that front side, and imagine the back side. Those are going to be the same, so we'll deal with those. And then we're going to have to deal with the two on the left and right-hand side. After we've done that, then lastly, we're going to have to deal with the 
on the bottom. All right. So this one's actually kind of interesting because we don't really follow the formula so much. We really have to think it out, and this is what more of the your assignment's going to look like. Um, so this is where students, as you can imagine, probably start experiencing some difficulties. So we have surface area is equal to. Let's deal with um, the blue triangle that we dealt with. All right. So we have two. And then we have, uh, so the area of the front triangle is 2. The reason why I dealt with a 2 first is because we have two triangles. So 2, and then we have the area of a triangle is 1 half, so 1 half. Base, so I'm going to deal with this front one right here, which is 6. Okay, now we found the slant. Now this is where it gets a little confusing. The slant right here is this guy that goes straight up, so that's root 68. So that's going to give you the area of the triangle. Recall where that 2 in the front came from. It just came because we had the front and the back are the same. Now we're going to deal with the other triangles. We have 2 times 1 half. Your base for this time is 4. All right, and your height is root 73. Okay. And lastly, I'll kind of write it down here. We have to deal with the base. And the base is 6 times 4. Hammer all that into our calculator. We got lots to do here. So you gotta be careful. Make sure you use brackets appropriately. I'll go two times 0.5 times six times root 68 plus two times 0.5 times four times root 73. You don't need to be using brackets here. You actually could get away with just using the um, Time sign, that's fine. Actually, I better go up here and add another bracket just to be careful. Okay, and then lastly, the base, which is uh, 6 times 4. And we get 107.65 meters. And they asked you to round it to the nearest square meter, so we would round that to being 108 meters squared as your final answer. Okay, so that's a tough question. You may need to ask me about that one in class. Um, let's push on. Write cones. Okay, I think you'll, a little typo right here, change that to 3D. Uh, I think you'll find the right cones are uh, quite a bit easier because the cones always look the same. The problem with pyramids is there's all type of different pyramids that we can have. A right circular cone is Ah, uh, yikes, it's getting ugly. Is a 3D object that oof, has a circular base and a curved surface. The height of the cone is the perpendicular, I don't even know why yeah, this is ugly, folks, is the perpendicular distance from the apex to the base. The slant height. of the cone is the shortest distance on the curved surface between the apex and the point on the circumference of the base. All right. So all that information is labeled right here. Um, the surface area, if you see, I've broken it down into lateral area and base area. So lateral area is everything around. So when they say lateral area in your assignment, make sure you understand base area, of course, at the bottom. Um, you see where this information comes from. This pi r square should look um, familiar because that, of course, is your base. That's the area of a circle. And then this part is your slant area, all right? Um, or your uh, lateral area, I should say, which is pi times r being your radius and s being your slant. Let's try a couple examples, and then I'll, uh, I'll turn you guys loose. Okay. So a right cone has a base area of 4 meters and a height of 10 meters. Calculate the surface area of this cone to the nearest square meter. If you recall, sometimes I'll even start out with the equation just so I know uh, what I'm missing. We have pi r s plus pi r squared. Well, we have the radius and we have the height. Unfortunately, we don't have that slant. All right, so I'm going to draw an ugly little sketch here. Um, you'll see that my drawings are epic as the year goes on. So this is kind of what uh, that guy would look like. Let's say that's a cone. And we have a height. I don't know why it's on an angle either, but it is. Uh, we have a height of 10, 
we have a radius of 4, and of course s would be over here. So let's calculate the slant first. We have Pythagoras. Once again, you're seeing there's lots of Pythagoras here. So Pythagoras has got to be an absolute cinch. Uh, 10 squared is 100, plus 4 squared is 16. That gives you 116 is equal to s squared, or s is equal to the square root of 116. Recall, I do not want 